Hey everybody, my name is Beacon, the Point Mechanic, and if you're watching this video, it's probably because you're interested in or maybe have already purchased some of the handles that we make here at Lost and Flow, and you're looking for some more information on them. In this video, I'll be giving you all the info you could possibly want to know, including specs, maintenance, how to take the lights in and out, and then if you're a do-it-yourselfer like myself and you bought the handles by themselves, I'll have a complete tutorial to show you how to build them. Now, if you uh, bought these from Flow on Fire, which they're our main seller right now, I really recommend that you have them make you the setup. Whether it's just making you the, the handle with a leash that you can put on your, your own heads or building you a complete LED setup, their product is amazing and they do great work, so I really recommend them. Now, if you're uh, wanting to skip ahead to any section that might appeal to you, look in the video description below. I've left timestamps and it'll help you navigate to those sections. So, let's get started. Both the Egg Knob and the Egg Knob Plus will use the .xl chip from Ultrapoi. This is the same chip you'll find in the Ultra Knob version 2. The Egg Knob Basic weighs 28 grams with the chip, and depending on how big of a puck you put on the end of your rope, you'll have enough space for maybe about 6 millimeters or so of washers. The Egg Knob Plus weighs 36 grams with the bearing and the chip, and that is the max weight. They are 41 millimeters long and 39 millimeters wide. And just to give you a size comparison, that is a 39 millimeter silicone knob. Now they will come in different colors in the future. Right now we only have them in clear. The day sets that will be different colors are going to be nice because they'll have a lot more space for weight in the back. And because this has a rubberized grip on it, whatever color is underneath that kind of turns to a, a matte finish and these outer rings will be a more gloss finish. So it'll basically be a two-tone knob. Now the bearing is a hybrid ceramic, which has a seal on both sides. And that really keeps the dirt out. I spin in the dirt all the time and have not had problems with these. Do keep in mind that uh, the more you spin these, the better they will spin. So there is a bit of a break in period. Now they'll come in a eight millimeter and a 10 millimeter bearing and 10 millimeters. You'll probably be able to get about a 10.3 millimeter rope in here, but don't really expect to be able to get a, uh, you know, seven sixteenths inch rope in that very easy at all. As a matter of fact, if you're planning on putting this on a used set of ropes, just be prepared for it to not work. <laughs> this uh, VPC rope or stuff like this, a lot of times will just swell up a little bit and it's already a snug fit on a brand new set. So um, it's gonna be hard to get this on a used set. But if you have a rope like this, which is a, um, a climbing rope, this is a dynamic rope, uh, it, it doesn't shrink that much and it doesn't swell all that much either. And so you could fit it on here. I've actually taken it on and off of this quite a few times. As far as caring and maintenance for these, there's not a whole lot you need to do. If you need to clean the grip, you can use a isopropyl alcohol or a mild soap and water. But if you do get this wet, make sure to take the chip out so you don't damage it. Definitely don't leave these out in the sun. Just like most plastics, they will start to yellow with UV reaction. Don't try to peel up the grip either. If you do that, this is a kind of a formed fit grip. And if you try to pull it up, it will stretch it in a way that it won't probably want to sit back down on there very well. Now, as far as the bearing goes, it is sealed. So there's not a whole lot you need to do with that. But if you wanted to take the seal off and put a different type of oil in there, you can do so at your own risk. And you got to be really careful. If you were going to do it, I, you know, I would do it with a razor blade and go on the outside edge of the seal and really be careful um, by prying it up. Um, you got to be careful because the seal has a metal backing to it and it's kind of easy to uh, warp that seal. So once you get it off though, and put your oil or whatever in there, then it should snap back in place. But again, be careful not to damage the rubber or that metal. The knob is made up of four different parts. The body, the bearing holder, the chip holder, and the diffuser. Once you get your rope prepared with either a bearing or a washer on it, and then a rope puck on the very end, you're gonna then take your other end and stick it through the bearing holder. Once you get to this point right here, there is a lip on the inside of this uh, bearing holder. So you're going to want to turn that at a slight angle and then pull it in and then make sure it's bottomed out. If it's not completely bottomed out, then this will rub into your diffuser. Next, take the chip and you're going to put the 
battery towards the button right there. And I stick it in this way first because otherwise it's a bit of a tight fit. And once it bottoms out, it should lay flat like that. Make sure that your charge port is lined up with that slot. And then on your diffuser, make sure that raised area right there is also lined up with the slot. Now, as you might be able to see there, there is a flat ridge on this side and a slanted ridge on that side. The flat ridge goes towards the bearing and uh, the slanted goes towards the chip. There's also a hole that goes through the center. The bigger hole goes towards the bearing and the smaller hole goes towards the chip. And that should just snap right in place. And then this snaps right onto that. So just pull it in there and you can push down a little bit with your thumb and there you go. Now to get it out, you want to bunch your rope up and I, I hold mine about an inch or so uh, back and then push forward like that and it should pop out and give you access to that charger. Now, um, if for whatever reason this gets stuck in here, you know, we made the tolerances a little tight on this to begin with because we know that this will break in at some point and we wanted it to be the perfect fit when it breaks in. If it is too hard for you to push out, you can take a very, very, very thin uh, coating of like, I don't know, chapstick or something like that and get on here and it should help, you know, lubricate it. But you really don't want to use that much at all. You could even use a little bit of lotion after you've used it on your hands and it's mostly soaked in. Now, if you're using another type of rope like this, this is what's called a, a single braid and it doesn't really bunch up very well it does that so this type of rope can be problematic to use on this so do be prepared for that uh, you can still get it out and it just takes a bit more effort and some people would actually even use something like this to get it out if they really want to use that rope and you just basically pinch on it right here and then push forward like that just be careful not to push this into the bearing because you can damage the seal so once you get it out if you want to take it apart you just do that like you're cracking an egg and then you pull that out and then don't pull up on the charge port uh, push on the button right or uh, right back here above the button and it kind of elongates it and then you can pull it up and it should pop out just fine now we notice that there is a slight difference in some of the batteries as far as how thick they are and like a half a millimeter difference or something, but we wanted to make it big enough to hold all the different chips. So if for whatever reason you feel like you're pressing in a little extra far to make the button work, um, you could put a piece of tape on the back of this to shim it up and then it should work just fine. So when it comes to ropes, there's synthetic and natural fibers. I don't recommend any natural fiber ones just because if you're doing orbitals and you make your ropes contact and then you pull like that, it's just going to wear them out a lot quicker. So I recommend synthetics. And when it comes to synthetics, there's a bunch of different choices and any of them should work as long as you use the right technique to put the cap on the end. Some you'll have to melt like that. Other ones you'll have to put an epoxy cap on or something similar. So when it comes to uh, the, the different types of ropes, this is called a single braid. This is what you'll find in polypropylene ropes. Uh, this is a uh, smithy rope, and there's also a nylon that looks like this. I don't really like this rope that much, um, just for my own reasons, but also for if you're using like the egg knob, this slides in and out a little too easy, and it makes it a little hard to get it to bunch up, and it, it does that. So keep that in mind. Um, this rope right here is a rope that you'd find on the Ultrapoi Orbs. I'm not too sure what it's made out of, but it's called a double braid. And what that means is it has a jacket and a core. And uh, if they're two different materials, sometimes they don't melt together very well. This does, though. It melts quite well, and you can you know, do this with a lighter. This is the VPC rope, and it doesn't melt together well because the jacket is polyester and the, the core is Vectrin, and they have different melting temperatures, so getting them to bond is challenging. I've seen some people make some crude caps, but I definitely don't recommend it if you're uh, doing orbitals and things like that because you don't want the rope to pull through and cause a poi to go flying. So in this case, I'll use a uh, epoxy. This is a fire uh, resistant rope called Technora and it is fire resistant. So it uh, doesn't really want to melt at all. So you'll have to use a epoxy on that. This is called a single braid, but it's technically a double braid too, because once you open this up, you can feed the rope through itself and then double it up like I have here. 
This rope is a climbing rope uh, called dynamic rope. Not all of these are made the same. Some of them have different materials and don't melt very well. This stuff melts all right. Uh, you definitely make a cap on this, but uh, check with whoever you're getting it from to make sure that they recommend you doing it that way or doing it with epoxy. So here comes the fun part. Let's put these things together. All right, so some ropes go through a bearing quite easily. Other ropes do not. If you have a frayed end like that, um, it's going to be extra hard to get it through there. So you'll want to clean that up. In this case, this one goes in there pretty easy. So what I could do is just melt the ends a little bit together. And then once they all start getting melted a little bit, then just start rolling it against something like uh, metal. Just be careful. Hot stuff hurts. Um, once I get it down there tight enough like that, then this should stick through there pretty easily. Other rope, like if you're using a 7 16 inch rope, I'm thinking if you found something like that in this style, you could get it through here. You'll want to cut it at an angle. And what I would do is use electrical tape. And I always use electrical tape because it gets the fibers really nice and tight for a really clean cut. So with something like that... Um, Cut it with a clean, or a fresh, I should say, razor blade, and go at an angle. Like that. And then stick that through there. So this is smithy rope. Smithy rope, nylon, and polypropylene all melt pretty uh, much the same and quite easily. So assuming that you already have a bearing on there, I'm going to show you how to put a cap on that. Now I've cut this uh, flush and then I've left uh, you know about a quarter inch of tape on there. I'm going to do another round of tape on the bottom here of that. And that's just to keep this from fraying out too much. And now I'm going to take a lighter. You can do this with a torch, but it burns really quick and easy. So I, I recommend doing this and just taking your time and going around. And you really want to go around because if you just hold it in one spot, it can uh, char it too quick. If it really starts getting black, like that's getting black, but it's melting. But if it's getting too black and it starts to bubble, that means you're usually getting it just a little bit too hot. So once I get it pretty much to the melting point like that. I'm going to find a flat metal object and then press it like that. And that should leave a cap. Now that cap is pretty crude, so if it's still warm, you can go like that and kind of round it off. And you might have to do this a couple times until you get that cap the best you can. Um, and you also don't want to make this catch on fire because if it's catching on fire, it means that it's too hot. Um, now you got to remember this is going to be set next to a bearing. So you want this to be, you know, sitting on this right here, which can be a challenge in of itself. But like if you heat it up and then roll it like this on a flat surface and then take another flat surface and do that, it should work just fine. So I'm going to try that right quick. Flat surface. And first I'm going to flatten that out a little bit and then I'm going to roll this against the flat surface and there you go. That should be good enough to sit on your bearing. If you have a low spot like that, you'll just have to keep working it until you just get it right. You could also set it on a flat surface and when it's warm, go around it with a pair of pliers or something. Just be careful because, um, as I said, it's pretty hot stuff. All right, next I'm going to do this Orb Poi rope from Ultra Poi. And this one is going to be just slightly different because it has the core like that. And in this case, I'm going to cut about a half an inch above where this tape is instead of a quarter inch like I did before. Like that. And then as you can see, this uh, core is flush with the outside jacket, but sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's back in there like that. And if that happens, what you'll do is loosely hold on to this, pinch hard back here, and you're going to bunch the rope up. And then once it bunches up, pinch and then pull and then try that again. And just keep doing that until you get that flush right there. And then you are ready to take the tape off. The reason I did this so far back is because this has a jacket, the jacket's going to flare out first and that's fine. 
Um, it, if the tape was too close, it wouldn't do that. And this would all melt to itself and not quite create the cap that I'm wanting. So first I'm gonna go around the outside and that does not look very clean right now, but it should soon. Once I go around the outside and it starts melting, then I'll go on the inside and it'll start shrinking into the outside a bit there. And then evenly heat it all up and then press on it like that. And then roll it. And if you need to, you can uh, light it again and take some kind of a flat object on the back side and smooth that out. So in this case, I'm going to use, let's see, so I'll use this razor blade. I should have probably used the back side of the razor blade and just smooth it out as I go around. And there you go. Now, I made this one a little messed up on purpose. If you can see right there, it has a little tab that's sticking down. And if that happens, it can go right into your bearing seal surface. So you want to make sure that you're not doing that. You'll feel it. It's just, it's not going to feel smooth. So uh, I would take that out again and then find that spot and then hold the lighter and hold the rope up. That way the heat's going up and not getting your fibers down here. And just still be careful that you don't get that. Well, once you heat it up a bit, then you can take it and then flatten it out like that. So also make sure you do a proper stress test. Like uh, even though you think you might have got it perfect before you start doing anything with it, just uh, pull on this harder than you would pull on an orbital and make sure that it is not going to go anywhere like that. So what happens if you have a thicker double braid rope that will barely fit on here? You can't just cut the rope and then try to stick it on because if you have tape on there, then the tape is even too thick. Um, if you cut it at an angle, you, sometimes you can make that work, but you're still dealing with tape and you're still dealing with the same thickness of rope. The best way I figured out how to do it is take the opposite side of your rope and pull it about a little ways out like that. And then pinch right there and pinch and roll or uh, pull your hand up the rope. And if you've done it properly, the core is now down here. Now you can stick this in there. If you can't, now's a good time to just uh, wrap this up extra tight. You could wrap it all the way out to the end or wrap it extra tight and then cut it. And now this should feed on there like that. That's the core right there. Now I can pull it on. Now, so you don't want to lose uh, the rope that you have. Well, you know, if you don't have much rope, you want to get that core back up to there. What you'll do is on this end of the, the uh, bearing, you'll pinch right here and then try to slide the rope up while you're pinching and then pinch with the opposite hand and let go and then smooth this out so it's tight again and then do the same thing and do that a couple times and eventually the core will come out the top. Okay, so I have a four and a half foot section of rope here and I have pretty long tethers to begin with, so I don't have much room to play around with. I could cut the rope in half and do the taper on both sides, but it's kind of a pain and you lose a little bit of rope each time you do that and I don't have much to spare. So what I did is I did the taper on one side and fed the bearing all the way down to that side and then put another bearing on. Now, if you are like me and you're going to be doing pod mods uh, and you use these little rings that we have here, um, these rings actually go inside of a capsule, uh, whether you're using a short shell or a long shell, they'll, they'll kind of snap in there like that. And so this is also a, an epoxy puck. So if you're doing it that way, I'm going to have my handles here and my pod mods down here. So what I needed to do is put first this uh, bowl shaped uh, puck with the bowl facing away from the bearing. I put that on first and then I put the bearing on and then you need to put another one on also with the bowl facing away from the bearing and then repeat the steps down here. So it's going to look like that. And then once you get the epoxy on here, you can cut the rope in the center and you're not going to have to worry about getting that over a really thick rope that you can't taper anymore. All right, so now I need to uh, cut this flush. But first I wanna do something that's really important. Um, 
if I try to push this up and it, it's uh, my, my mold is up here and it's already set up and everything and I'm trying to push this, a lot of times this will bunch up. And the way to prevent that is to get it as tight as you can against the core to begin with. So pinch it off right here and then pull on this and get everything nice and tight. So once the puck is, is uh, formed, then I'm gonna slide this down and since this is all constricted, it should slide up there just fine. Next, make sure they get this on there as straight as possible because this is going to be going against your bearing. I'm then going to wrap this tightly with tape. And I'm going to cut it right next to the mold there. All right, so I'm ready to mix, and this stuff is messy. Trust me on that. Wear gloves, have some protective thing down. I even put some tape on my rope to keep it from getting on there on accident. I use uh, Defcon Home 5-Minute Epoxy, the clear version, which I get at uh, Ace Hardware. But if you're getting this from Flow on Fire, they sell little epoxy kits for their push-through method um, for your day poi. So with two-part epoxy, it is very, very important to have two equal parts in your container before you mix it. So leave your container or your whatever it is up so that the air bubbles will go to the top because otherwise if you're pushing out air bubbles on one side and not the other, then it's not going to be an even mix. So I'm going to go ahead and stick some in there. You don't really need a whole lot for this at all. And... Now, mixing is, is really, really important to get this done properly. Normally, I wouldn't do it in a dish container like this. I would like to have something that I can scrape the sides on and make sure that I'm scraped, uh, scraping the bottom all as good as I could. Now, don't use a container that has little like uh, dips in it or ridges in it or whatever that will keep some epoxy um, below your mixing device because... Otherwise, it won't it mix evenly, and then you'll get like uh, you know sticky, non-curable epoxy. So I, I mix that up a couple times, make sure to wipe it off the stick, and then do it again. Really mix it good, and then start applying. At first, don't worry about getting around the edges, but that is important to do. Um, first, get the top covered and then have a toothpick nearby. And you're going to stab it over and over and over. And what you're doing is you're driving that epoxy into the core to be able to get it to bond to the outer fibers. And this is really important, otherwise the um, core could slip if it wasn't bonded well enough. And then I'm going to do that again. And then just pressing like this oftentimes drives it down beside the rope. But if it's not doing that, then that's now the time to use your toothpick and kind of get inside there um, next to the fibers. Sometimes you can just push some back and then get some in there. And you have, as this label says, five minutes to work with the epoxy. So try to get it in there with some urgency. But also be careful not to slip and touch your rope or the bearing or whatever. So I'm going to keep doing this. And then I'm going to come back at the five minute mark to show you how to clean up uneven edges. Okay, you also need to make sure that this puck is going to sit flat on the bearing. So if you have to make any adjustments, do it now and do it very carefully because if you uh, press too hard and that slides off, then you have to start again from scratch and that doesn't sound like fun to me. Okay, so the five minutes is up and I need to check this and yep, it's it's about uh, not quite hard, a little bit flexible still. So now's a good time to trim this up if you need to. Again, get a fresh razor blade for this and should cut pretty cleanly. Okay, and I am all done with that. Now, the problem is this is bunching up a little bit when I try to push this down. And uh, if that happens to you, especially if you're using a really thick rope like I'm using on this, 
Uh, the best way I found to fix that is to take a piece of floss and then tie like three knots in it as tight as you can get it. And then hold on to one tail and start making passes all the way down as close as you can to the next one, getting it as tight as you can. Try not to let any little fibers stick out. That's going to prevent this from wanting to go down. And didn't follow my own directions because there's some that are sticking out a little bit, but let's try this now. Now I've pulled it into place. I can take this off and then pull it again and it should seat down on there about where it's needing to. So yeah, if you've made it this far, good job. And uh, if not, <laughs> you decided you want uh, Flow on Fire to uh, make you a set, then uh, they do a great job. And if you want a discount code, it is Koi Mechanic, all one word, all capitalized. Thanks a lot for watching, everyone. Let me know if you have any comments or questions. And if you haven't been over to my YouTube channel, it is The Poi Mechanic. And I have a lot more of these videos over there to check out. Have a good one, and I will see you next time.